Hey there, everybody. How are you doing today? We are here doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and I thought the sky was pretty cool. So I like this view for today's video. So here we are, lesson 184. The name of God is my inheritance. You live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see. Each one becomes a separate entity identified by its own name. By this, you carve it out of unity. By this, you designate its special attributes and set it off from other things by emphasizing space around it. This space you lay between all things to which you give a different name, all happenings in terms of place and time, all bodies which are greeted by a name. This space you see as setting off all things from one another is the means by which the world's perception is achieved. You see something where nothing is, and see as well nothing where there is unity, a space between all things, between all things and you. Thus do you think that you have given life in separation. By this split, you think you are established as a unity which functions with an independent will. Right, right before Independence Day, we get to learn this. <laughs> what are these names by which the world becomes a series of discrete events, like Independence Day, of things unified, of bodies kept apart, and holding bits of mind as separate awareness? You gave these names to them, establishing perception as you wish to have perception be. The nameless things were given names, and thus reality was given them as well. For what is named is given meaning and will then be seen as meaningful is a cause of true effect with consequence inherent in itself. Okay, now that sentence feels like it could be taken apart and reread a couple times, but we're going to push through. <laughs> this is the way reality is made by partial vision, purposefully set against the given truth. Its enemy is wholeness. It conceives of little things and looks upon them. Okay and a lack of space, a sense of unity or vision that sees differently, becomes the threats which it must overcome, conflict with, and deny. Okay, its enemy is wholeness, very interesting. Yet does this other vision still remain a natural direction for the mind to channel its perception? Does this other vision still remain a natural direction for the mind to channel its perception? It is hard to teach the mind a thousand alien names and thousands more. Yet you believe this is what learning means. It's one essential goal by which communication is achieved and concepts can be meaningfully shared. This is the sum of the inheritance the world bestows. And everyone who learns to think that it is so accepts the signs and symbols that assert the world is real. Here we go again. It is for this they stand. They leave no doubt that what is named is there, is there. It can be seen as is anticipated. What denies that it is true but illusion for it is the ultimate reality. To question it is madness. To accept its presence is proof of sanity. Such is the leading, such is the teaching of the world. It is a phase of learning everyone who comes must go through. But the sooner he perceives on what it rests, how questionable are its premises, how doubtful its results, the sooner does he question its effects. Learning, that's, learning that stops with what the world would teach stops short of meaning. In its proper place, it serves but as a starting point from which another kind of learning can begin. A new perception can be gained and all the arbitrary names the world bestows can be withdrawn as they are raised to doubt. Think you not made the world. Wait, think not you made the world. Those, are all, those sentences are weird to me. Think not, you made the world. So you didn't make the world. I think that's what it says. Illusions, yes, with an exclamation point. What is true in earth and in heaven is beyond your naming. When you call upon a brother, it is to his body that you make appeal. His true identity is hidden from you by what you believe he really is. His body makes response to what you call him, for his mind consents to take the name you give him as his own. Oh, wow. And thus his unity is twice denied. 
for you perceive him separate from you, and he accepts this separate name as his. It would indeed be strange if you were asked to go beyond all symbols of the world, forgetting them forever, yet were asked to take a teaching function. You have need to use the symbols of the world a while. Okay, this is Jesus telling us, you're in a transition period. You still need to participate a little. But be you not deceived by them as well. They do not stand for anything at all. And in your practicing, it is this thought that will release you from them. They become but means by which you can communicate in ways the world can understand, but which you recognize is not the unity where true communication can be found. Thus, what you need are intervals each day in which the learning of the world becomes a transitory phase, a prison house from which you go into the sunlight and forget the darkness, here you understand the word, the name of God, the name which God has given you of what is true. And then step back to darkness, not because you think it real, but only to proclaim its unreality in terms which still have meaning in the world that darkness rules. Bam! That's like a mic drop kind of a moment for me. Use all the little names and symbols which delineate the world of darkness, yet accept them not as your reality. The Holy Spirit uses all of them, but he does not forget creation has one name, one meaning, and a single source which, I, which unifies all things within itself. Use all the names the world bestows on them, but for convenience, yet do not forget they share the name of God along with you. God has no name, and yet his name becomes the final lesson that all things are one, and at this lesson does all learning end. All names are unified. All space is filled with truth's reflection. Every gap is closed and separation healed. The name of God is the inheritance he gave to those who teach, who choose the teaching of the world to take the place of heaven. In our practicing, our purpose is to let our minds accept what God has given as the answer to the pitiful inheritance you made as fitting tribute to the son he loves. No one can fail who seeks the meaning of the name of God. Experience must come to supplement the word, but first you must accept the name for all reality and realize the many names you gave its aspects have distorted what you see, but have not interfered with the truth at all. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> One name we bring into our practicing one name we use to unify our sight. And though we use a different name for each awareness of an aspect of God's Son, we understand that we have but one name, which He has given them all. It is this name we use in practicing, and through its use all foolish separations disappear which kept us blind, and we are given strength to see beyond them. Now our sight is blessed with blessings we can give as we receive. And here's our prayer for this lesson. This is a powerful lesson. Wow. Father, our name is yours. In it, we are united with all living things and you who are their one creator. What we made and call by many different names is but a shadow we have tried to cast across your own reality. And we are glad and thankful we were wrong. All our mistakes we give to you that we may be absolved from all effects our errors seem to have and we accept the truth you give in place of every one of them. Your name is our salvation, an escape from what we made. Your name unites us in the oneness which is our inheritance and peace. Amen. Huh. Heard some sneezes over there. So this lesson is giving us some really, really great guidance and I feel like going back into here and rereading this is going to be super helpful because it's like telling us you're in a transitory phase right now and you still may need to play in the world a little bit but your you know your focus is ascension and raising your consciousness and raising your vibration and like you have a focus but you can still sort of have one foot in in this this other place and love it and respect it and look for what are the lessons in it um yeah, that's really good. That prayer was beautiful. Okay, so let's come over here and look at what Jesus has to say, just as it starts to rain a little bit, uh, for Lesson 184 in A Year of Forgiveness. 
The name of God is my inheritance. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one you know as Jesus. The awareness that everything is connected is one of the fundamental tenets of this particular teaching. You are not free from the effects of your thinking. When you attack others, you wound yourself. You are all connected. You give as you receive. These are all principles stating the same thing. When you see you are, on, you are unified as an aspect of God mind, you are, an idea of, you are an idea in the mind of God. You see that to attack another, who is also an idea in the mind of God, is pointless, ridiculous, and in fact, blasphemous. Understand that with forgiveness, you lose nothing. You gain everything because you do not punch at shadows anymore. That is what happens when you attack or judge your brother or perceive him less than you. You attack you. It is hard for you to remember this, so we get you to focus your mind on the oneness of all things. We get, to tell, we get you to tell yourself that you are part of a unified consciousness, and it is so. You are the collective brotherhood and sisterhood of humanity. You are powerful creators made in the image of your creator. Your creator makes you in its image loving, expansive, self-expressive, freedom-seeking, and intelligent. And that is what all of you are. You have mistaken your brothers and sisters for enemies. You believe that if you attack them, you remain free from attack. That is one of the great illusions of all. Actually, you hurt when you attack another, for you attack another thought in the same one mind. I am that one you know is Jesus, and we will speak to you tomorrow. Oh, all right, so lots of teachings about oneness and about being in transition today. Hope you all take it in, enjoy it, and uh, do, some, do some good rounds with this, just thinking about all of this stuff, like what's, what's your guidance telling you specifically right now, and how did this lesson sort of synchronistically link up with whatever your guidance has been, because it feels really, really like a common topic that I speak to everyone about lately is they're in a big transition. All right, lots of love. Talk to you tomorrow.